Hi there and welcome to the 10th workout of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. Now don't worry, I know this is day 10, if you've not done the first nine, it's not a problem. You can keep on going from now, you can just do a few, it's entirely up to you. Now today's row is going to be a low intensity workout and this is perfect for uh, letting you burn some calories, burn off some fat, work on your technique and get just used to rowing, okay? It's a fantastic workout, I cannot oversell this workout, it's just amazing. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into two minute chunks, we're going to go two minutes at 8 18 strokes a minute, then two minutes at 20 strokes a minute, then back down to 18, then 20, 18, 20, blah, blah, blah. And eventually 30 minutes will be done and you'll be like, wow, that flew by. Because trust me, it will by breaking it down into two minute chunks. As for the pace, I'll talk about that in today's warm up. It's a four minute warm up we're doing and we have to set up our machine first. So on a concept two, let's go to the front and set your drag factor to where you want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor, just set your lever between four and five, okay? Because too low isn't the problem, too high is the problem. If you're on a non-concept two, set your resistance, whatever you've got, or your water tank, so you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it to get it moving. Next up, if you're able to, please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up, you don't have to look down, both of which can damage your posture. And finally, if you can set your foot uh, plates, uh, yeah, foot plates, foot stretchers, whatever, so that you can get to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically, okay? If you're set too high, that could be a bit tough. Set too low, you might go scooting past that position and that just causes power leaks and things, okay? So we're gonna start this warm up at 20 strokes a minute and I just want the power to be as though you're just standing up, okay? A light push from the legs so you can think about connecting your feet into the foot plates at the same time as the handle connects to the flywheel or water wheel, etc. Right, let's talk in more rowing. Here we go then, in three, two, one, let's go. So, like I say, just enough of a push to basically just get your machine moving for the time being. I'm gonna spend this first minute working on the timing of the push of the feet and the connection of the handle to the machine. Because you want it to happen both at the same time, because that's how you get the power from your feet into the handle. And after all, your legs are much bigger than your arms. So you want that power to be coming from your legs first, and then you finish with your arms. Now, this is why the body position in rowing, you want to have a forwards tilt and straight arms, because that helps that connection. So do think about keeping those arms straight as you push that power in and that forwards tilt to about one o'clock towards the front of the machine. And now that we're a minute in, you can think about adding a bit more power. But I don't need to go too far, power-wise. After all, this is still a warm-up. So just kind of think exertion should be like how it, would feel, how it would feel if you were climbing up like a consistent set of stairs, okay? So you know your heart rate's gonna go up, your breathing rate will go up eventually, but you don't have to stop. Or as long as you're not running up the stairs, you don't have to stop. You can happily keep going. And that's what not only the warm-up region is, but it's kind of what the intensity of today's workout will be like, okay? So 2K plus 18 and 2K plus 20 for those of the 2K training time. But for everyone else, five out of 10, walking upstairs kind of exertion. Okay, two more strokes. And we're gonna put one foot on the ground. Okay, unstrap, foot on the ground, carry on rowing. Why are we doing this, you ask? Well, for a start, it stops the warm up getting too intense. You don't want to overdo your warm-up and then be gassed before the main workout. But also, it helps to open up your hips a little bit when it comes to that forwards tilt to the front of the machine. So you can get used to it a bit more. Okay, let's swap feet. One in, one out. Keep rowing. And it also helps with that shins vertical thing as well. By only having one leg strapped in, it's easier to roll forwards enough for that shin to be pointing vertical. It just helps with your flexibility, just opens your body up, warms you up, literally. It's like this was a warm up. Okay, both feet in, quickly tighten your straps, then legs straight, and roll with your back and arms. 
So swing over your back, pull in your arms, out with your arms, rock forwards with your back again. So rock, pull, push, rock. Rock, pull, push, rock. And you really want to make sure and pick up that initial tension of your stroke with your back rock. One more here. Then we're going to roll to the front with a forwards tilt, straight arms, and just press out from the front again with that light power. Because all I want you to do is concentrate on the timing between your feet and your hands, that they both connect at the same time, but also holding this position, holding this forwards tilt and straight arms as you push with your legs. Okay? Don't swing back too soon. Let's do one more here. Ooh. Now, in a break to how I've been making these videos so far, rather than winding back to a row from 2021, I'm going to do this one today as well, because my training schedule today has a low intensity workout. So why not do this one with you? So finally you get to listen to my 22 or 2022 ramblings instead. So I'm going to have a quick drink. Uh, you do the same. Keep moving up and down the rail, and then we'll quickly get started into our main session. Okay then, hopefully you are ready to get started into today's main session, which is a quick reminder, we are alternating 18 and 20 strokes per minute every two minutes. Remember just to follow me for stroke rate if you're not used to rowing this at such a low rate, um, and eventually you'll just get into the groove of it, it'll be absolutely fine. Okay, so if you're ready, nicely strapped in, pick up your handle, and we're going to get going in three, two, one, and we're off. So. 18 strokes per minute to start, which can feel a little bit awkward at first if you haven't before. So don't worry about it if you're just like, oh, what's going on? Like I say, you can either follow me on the video, just try and follow my rhythm of drive to recovery. Or if you're listening to this on the podcast, just listen to the whoosh of my flywheel and you'll know when I'm taking a stroke. That's if I shut up long enough for you to be able to hear it, of course. <laughs> but no matter what stroke rate you're rowing at, it really is just about rhythm. Once you get into that nice rhythm of drive and recover, drive and recover with like a two to one ratio of the drive is twice as fast as the recovery, then it all kind of starts to fall into place and hopefully you can just kind of switch off, not need to co concentrate quite as uh, strongly, intensely, whatever. But it is, like I say, it's rhythm. So it's about making sure you're fluid. Okay, there's never a point where I'm stopped. I drive, I release, then I bend my knees. Release. So the release means handle away and rock over my hips. And then I bend my knees, okay? Okay, so that's two minutes almost done. We get to change it up to 20 strokes a minute in three strokes time. So just a bit more of a push from the legs. Last one here. So let's go up to 20. So if you just push a tiny bit more with the legs, you'll have a slightly faster drive speed. And then if you complement that with a slightly faster recovery phase, that should be enough to just give you an extra two strokes per minute. I mean, the difference between 18 and 20 isn't much. Well, it's two. <laughs> but you get what I mean about per stroke, it's not much. You may feel the 20 is a bit more fluid because it's a tiny bit faster, but it shouldn't be, a, like, it shouldn't really feel the power difference being massive. There's so much to love about this row. And the important thing 
when it comes to pace and intensity is to keep this nice and low, okay? Don't let your ego take over and try and make you row faster than I'm suggesting. Slower is better than faster. The moment you start to feel like you're working a wee bit too hard, you kind of change the purpose of this row. Hang on, four strokes to go. Then we're gonna go back to 18s. Two more. One more. All right, so slow it down to 18 strokes a minute. And what you'll probably find is that your pace will drop by about two seconds as you go from the 20s down to the 18s. And that's okay, that's the point. You're not really trying to match pace for these. Let there be a two second difference between the 18 and the 20 strokes a minute. But the intensity is the important part. You want to keep it at that low intensity. I mean, you're still putting in effort. I'm not saying you're not trying. Like I said in the warm up, your heart rate needs to be up to, let's say, between 60 and max 70% of your max heart rate. Your breathing should have increased but you should still be able to hold a conversation with someone. And there should never be a point when you're thinking, there's no way I could row for another 24 minutes and 32 seconds at this pace, okay? The moment this starts to feel taxing, you've tipped the balance away from the benefits it's meant to give you the fitness building, fat burning, stroke grinding, fun row that it is. Okay, two more. Then we're back up to 20 strokes a minute. Here we go. So just a bit more of a push. Increase the drive freight phase. Increase the speed of the recovery phase as well. Just enough to take you to 20 strokes a minute. And this works from a pace point of view and intensity most effectively when you have a consistent technique, no matter what stroke rate you're rowing at. So no matter whether I'm 18 or 30 strokes a minute, I try to make sure that my body is in the same positions at the start, at the drive, at the finish, and at the recovery of the stroke. And when that consistent stroke comes knowing that I can change my pace just by changing stroke rate or how much I push with the legs. The moment you start to have wacky, weird variations in your stroke that aren't consistent, that's when you can't really be sure of your pace when you sit down to row. None more so than if you're someone who pulls early from the front of the machine. So, a few more strokes. And we are back to 18 strokes a minute. Whew. So just remember, forwards, tilt, straight arms, 
as you roll in to the front of the machine. And then only come in as far as shins vertical. So if your seat is banging off your heels, you're sliding too far. And then hold that position as you push your legs into the machine. Let that force from your legs just transfer into the handle as you hang off the handle. And that will give you consistent power into the stroke. And then only when you are about halfway through the leg drive, do you finally swing your upper body from that forwards tilt to the backwards tilt. And only then do you pull your arms into a finish to see how long my arms remain straight for. Straight pull. Straight pull. Straight pull. Okay, so try to avoid that early grab, that early pull of the handle. Okay, one more. Back up to 20. You ready? Here we go. Just a couple of seconds faster as you take it. A couple of strokes per minute higher. Now, that's 10 minutes gone already. Told you this row absolutely whizzes by. Just by looking at the clock in terms of two minute chunks, rather than thinking of it as a full half hour row, it just goes by so much quicker. Hopefully, of course, my scintillating chat keeping you company on the machine is also helping. <laughs> oh, I don't know, if you look at yesterday's row where I'd obviously put something special in my food and I just go off on one, start talking random nonsense. It feels like it was been a, been a very straight start to this row. Not had any weird diversion. That'd be the magic of sausage pasta. But it could also be the endorphin rush of being 10 days straight into this series. I mean, it's important that you take a rest day if you need it but the programming of this series should be that you can go through all 30. One more here. And down to 18s again, as we hit, hit 18 minutes to go. Because yeah, if you look at how these rows are programmed, you'll hopefully have spotted, in fact, I've already said it once before, that there's always a low intensity row following one of the higher intensities. So if it's mid, like yesterday, then the next day is low. And then if it's low, then the next day is gonna be either a mid or a top. And so how it's all spread out is geared so that these low intensity rows give you the active recovery that you need in order to try and make it through all 30 days 
if that's your plan. Remember, it doesn't have to be your plan. And in fact, even if it is your plan, if you get so many days in and you feel that your energy tank has just been drained and take the rest day, there's no pot of gold at the end of 30 days straight. I mean, I'll give you a certificate for doing all 30 days, but regardless of how you do them. Okay, two more. And we'll go back up to 20 again. Here we go. Bit more of a push for those legs. Don't know what my dinner plans are tonight, actually. Oh no, I do. It's fajita chicken. Well, fajitas really, but it's breaded fajita chicken in wraps with salad and guacamole and stuff. Guacamole made from baby guacas, of course. Those poor guaca farms. It's a shame, really. They're so cute. <laughs> That's an in-joke for the for the family, to be honest. I think it was one time Julie and I were discussing guacamole and saying, what's it made of? Before knowing it was avocado. And one of us said, baby guacas. And that was about 20 years ago. <laughs> if you've done enough of these rows, you'll know me by now that I like a tradition, I like a repeated joke, I like a spaghetti bolognese every Friday night for the past, what, 21 years, 22 years? However long Julie and I have been living together and then married every Friday night is spaghetti night. Although, it's only a, I'm recording this on a Tuesday, so got a few days to wait. Okay, two more. Back down to 18s. Keep it fluid. Remember what I said at the start. You're not stopping. You're not choking your stroke to go slower. It's not like you stop, hang around, Come forwards, okay? Everything's fluid. Drive, release, rock, recover, okay? Everything moves into itself, both at the front of the stroke and at the back. So however quickly you pull the handle into your chest, at your lower sternum height, release it in the same pace, create that rhythm in, out, or vroom, vroom, if it was a lightsaber. Of course, if it was a lightsaber, I'd be repeatedly chopping myself in half. And I've moved my heart rate monitor up a tiny bit, so it's slightly above my lower sternum. Why? Well, because I got one of those MyZone straps. And by heck, they're expensive. <laughs> so I don't want to risk breaking this one, like I think I did to the Power Labs one. I'm going to do a review of it at one point whether it's worth the money, etc. Okay, two more. One more. Here we go up to 20s. And it should be, you shouldn't really feel a huge change in that 
exertion between 18 and 20. Your heart rate may nudge up a couple of beats because obviously you're rowing a little bit faster but if you think that these 18 strokes a minute sections are like 5 out of 10 then these 20s should only really be kind of knocking on the door of 6 out of 10 like I say you should still be able to have a conversation sure you might need to let the person you're with talk every now and then so you can catch your breath but you shouldn't be kind of spitting out one word at a time if you are then you're closer to a mid or even top intensity row depending on how tough you're finding it but anyway, I'm rowing at 2k plus 18 and 2k plus 20 right now which is my paces for the two stroke rates and have I shut up yet? no <laughs> Are you willing me to? Probably. <laughs> Two more. One more. And let's get back to 18. With 10 minutes to go. So, I'm purposefully throwing out little nuggets of technique in today's row. Rather than just going through the entire thing from start to finish and kind of overloading you with information I used to have a great squash coach Martin Woods tiny little man but very good <laughs> and he said to me how you should never give people more than three pieces of new information at a time because it just won't take it in it's too much and especially if I'm giving you tips on how to move your body things to think about like arms straight forwards tilt push with your legs it can be even harder to actually translate that to your body so that's why today I'm just metering it out in bits so don't worry if I talk about something and you're like hang on I'm almost 22 minutes in and clearly I've been doing it wrong as long as you start to address can try to improve that's all that matters okay two more one more here we go up to 20 again we've only got four more chunks left to do this is under eight minutes it's really I mean, when I'm not talking about my dinner plans or my love of Van Halen, Dead Mouse and my family not in that order <laughs> Flip it all the way around No, Van Halen comes too, then Dead Mouse um, If I'm not talking about that I'm talking technique or dinner plans Oop. Who messaged me? Ah, the basis for my band. I'll read that later. But the reason I talk technique, well, it's kind of twofold. First one is just to help you be more efficient, faster, able to use all your muscles 
so you burn more calories, more fat. So if weight loss through a calorie deficit is your goal, rowing can be a huge part of that as long as you're doing it right. So you wanna use all available muscles, which is why you hang off the front and push your legs in first and then swing and pull. That uses legs, back, arms. Whereas if you don't push your legs or you don't swing your back, all you're using is your arms. Okay, two more. One more. Okay, down to 18s. But the other thing is injury prevention. If you've got a really jerky, wrenching style of stroke, the likelihood of you kind of twanging the shoulder muscle, getting golfer's elbow, doing what I did when I started and tearing a intercostal in your rib, rib cage, rib cage. All those things can happen if you have a weird stroke or if your body isn't strong enough to withstand the new forces that you're asking it to do. So why you don't set the drag factor on your machine too high is because there's a really strong tendency to pull and heave against that increased weight of the stroke. So what you want to find is the perfect drag factor that lets you push your feet in with power, keeping those arms straight and that forwards tilt as you do so. The moment you have to fight against it, it's set too high. Two more. One more. Okay, up to 20. It's the last of the 20s. I've, I did it this way around on purpose so that you would finish on the slower stroke rate and the lighter intensity rather than screaming in to a handbrake turn at the finish. Not that this is handbrake turn pace, of course. So the last thing to say technique wise, even though there's more I can talk about, but with just over three minutes to go, if you are starting to fatigue and that exertion intensity is just rising beyond your control, that's okay at this stage. With like five minutes to go, maybe six or seven, if you're not used to rowing for half an hour, it's understandable and acceptable. But what you don't want to happen as you get tired is let things collapse. And that means heaving against the stroke, it means not using your legs because they're tired. You still want that forward tilt, straight arms and a push with your legs. But also make sure your posture doesn't fall apart on you. Hang on. Three, two, one. Last set of 18s to finish. It's only 34 strokes to go. 
Um, but yeah, carry on sitting tall, okay? Up on your sit bones as you roll forwards. So you wanna finish with a good posture, core braced at the finish, and then rise up onto your sit bones. Hands go past your knees, your body rocks forwards, and then you bend your knees. And that way, you will easily roll to the front of the machine. 18 strokes to go in the right body angles and hopefully the right posture. Hips tilted forwards, shoulders past your hips, arms straight, fingers hooked over the handle rather than a death grip trying to choke it. It's not a snake. It's a rowing machine handle. Handle. Let that power flow. Your arms and fingers are a conduit for that initial leg drive. Three more strokes. Two more. Last one. Whew. That was fun. Oh, I enjoyed that. Come on, here we go. Feet out. Get yourself settled for a second. Have a drink if you have one. Note to self, dip the audio. <laughs> mm, yum. I started to make my own concoction of energy drink. Ah, based on, ooh, uh, there's an energy drink called Builder. And quite helpfully, they put on the website what they have in it and what the values are. <laughs> so I would have bought that, but it's not for, it's out of stock, so I had to make my own. So yeah, uh, electrolytes, BC, BCAAs, taurine and beta alanine. That's all it is. Anyway, right. Let's get into a two minute cool down. Are you okay for this? I hope so. Um, oh, we're gonna do this pretty much at the same pace you were just rowing the rest of that um, workout at, but um, the point here is that you can gradually slow down through it. So even if you wanna start off a few seconds slower, that's absolutely fine. But here we go then. Two minute cool down in three, two, one. Let's go. Ooh. So just let this be a way for your body and your brain to just disconnect from the exertion of what you just did. I mean, if this was yoga or something, I'd be like, I invite you to release the memories of the exertion you just suffered. Suffered? No, no. Can't say suffer. Uh, experience the exertion you just experienced. See, I'd make a terrible yoga teacher. I'll leave it to Adrienne and her dog. I watch her for the yoga, totally. Nothing to do with the, the fact that <laughs> it does help yoga as well. But I'm also a big dumb male, so it's, I think <laughs> probably in many ways, <laughs> I'm the victim of my own nonsense where I keep on comparing myself, I'll keep on, maybe and then I compare myself to another indoor rowing channel on YouTube, the guy that has his shirt off all the time. And again, it's probably a reason that people watch the guy with his shirt off rather than the guy with his motivating waffle t-shirt on, available in the roll on shop. Well, is. The whole point of the shop, though, is just that it's cheaper. If I sell, if I make these t-shirts and post them to a shop and then buy them from myself, it's cheaper than if I was to use the same company to make them as a one-off. 
even though it's a dropship company, the prints to order. Doesn't really make any sense, but yeah, so that's the whole reason the shop's there. Ah, there you go. That's the two minute cool down done. You can of course carry on cooling down. Don't stop just because I have. Uh, or I'm about to do some stretching. If you don't have time to do stretching, please at least stretch your quads and your hamstrings. You've no idea how, especially your hamstrings to be honest, how tight hamstrings can really affect your rowing in ways that you just don't understand. Or, well, I don't understand. <laughs> or, that's it, stretch your John's up in the corner. As always, he'll take you through uh, guided stretching and I will take you through guided stretching while on the machine in case you don't have space. So, legs straight, toes back against looser straps, okay? So you get a nice angle between your feet and your legs. Hands in the air and then fold oh, your body down. There we go with the dad noises again. Oh, yesterday I did. Uh, I was running for an hour on the treadmill. It's the first time in a long time that I've done an hour's run on a treadmill. I said this in yesterday's video as well, I know, but... Um, guys, that rain. I don't know if you can hear that. Oh, crikey. I think I'm going to stay in the studio for a while. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and my hamstrings are exceptionally tight. I, mean, I thought my hamstrings would have been that tight after a run, but apparently so. Okay. I totally didn't talk you through the stretching the hamstrings that time, but hopefully you've heard me say it enough. Uh, right, so um, glutes next. So put one leg up on the rail, the other uh, heel goes over so it's in the crook of your knee. And then bring this knee across your body so you've got a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. And then hold it in place with the other arm. Hold on to the back of the machine if you want for stability. And then turn your body to rotate round into your glute. And that should activate the stretch right in your glute. Remember podcast people... This is probably slightly lost on you, so you may want to just jump onto one of the YouTube uh, videos one day, maybe over lunch or something. Or, hey, I'll, I'll even say it, you can do it when you're sitting in the toilet. I mean, if you think about Facebook and stuff, the amount of likes and comments and whatever that get posted on Facebook or tweets or whatever from people sitting on the toilet. I don't mind if you watch my videos while you're sitting on the toilet. I, I'd love to keep you company, to be honest. Let's change, change legs. I can think of no better place for my videos than in the toilet. <laughs> That was a cheap joke. <laughs> Best I said it though, wasn't it? If you can make fun of yourself before someone else makes fun of you, it's, it's a lot easier mentally. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to watch my technique um, or app reviews or whatever while you're sitting on the most comfortable seat in the house, please do. I don't mind. I don't recommend rowing in the toilet. But maybe you could, maybe you've, got your, maybe you've got one of these huge big wet rooms or something and that's the best place for your rowing machine because then all the sweat goes in the ground. Right, uh, cool, sorry. Uh, let's do our, uh, those quads next. So um, stand next to your machine, put one finger on the monitor for stability if you wish, and then flick your foot up behind you so that your heel is up against your backside and then give a little pull just to help that stretch into the quad, okay? Into, quads being that kind of the big muscle on the front of your thighs. Uh, yeah, quadriceps. Quadricep blah blah blah. <laughs> uh, that's like Joey from Friends speaking French, isn't it? Blah 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 blah. It's amazing. My kids, right, it's changed legs. You can tell that I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of losing the plot for stretching there. Uh, my kids are still just obsessed with Friends. I mean, every day. That's, it's like if Holly has like a, a, a spare 20 minutes or something. She'll be like, can I watch Friends? And they still watch it over and over and over again. They just love it. And I mean, it's a great series. It's, it's, I mean, apart from, there was one weird series when Ross went mad, but it's a great program. And to be honest, again, being a big dumb male, I quite enjoy watching Jennifer Aniston, but um, it's just so strange how it still strikes a chord. Right, let's do hip flexors next. So uh, one knee on the ground with your foot up on its toes behind. Your other foot is in front of you on the ground with your knee above it. So you've got 90 degree angles on both sides. And then with the knee that's on the ground, take that hip and push it forwards. Keep a good posture. See how, ooh, a good posture. we we'll just push that hip forwards. Um, and you should feel you get a nice stretch down into that hip flexor. <sighs> One thing I'll notice, this last thing I'll say about friends, is just how um, obsessed, like completely obsessed they were about, um, about coitus, let's call it, as Sheldon would say from Big Bang Theory. Every episode, they're just constantly like dogs on heat, constantly wanting to find someone to get into bed with. And so when you've you got 12 and 10 year old kids, you're trying to explain 
what's going on. I mean, does that mean we're a bad dad for letting them watch it? Changing legs, whee! So same thing again, just push that hip forward. But to be honest, once they get to 12 and 10, they, I know they hear worse at school, so... Cricket, they can teach me language nowadays that... <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Do you hear that? It's time for me to drink water. That's my thing, so in fact, actually, can I grab my thing? Sorry, I have to remember and mute that one now as well. Oh, that's a problem having drinks mid-video uh, record is I have to remember to dip the audio because nobody wants to hear hear me having a big glug of a sports drink. If you want, I'll post what I use to make it. I'll give you links to the bulk that I use right now, but yeah, it's tasty. So uh, what we'll do next, forearms. Uh, hands in front of your face, push down in front of you. Ooh, so that your uh, fingers and wrists are at right angles. That, ooh, is because my forearms are a little bit, I'm trying to see this is my mental, oh, I know why, I was doing, um, Farmer carries last night um, as part of my high rocks training. Um, so it was, what did I do? 500 meters uh, farmer carries with two 24 kilogram kettlebells. So that's probably why my forearms are feeling a little bit tender today. Because in the high rocks thing, one of the one of the things, if you, if you don't know about a high rocks, in fact, let's move on to shoulders. So hands straight in front of you, bring your arm across your body, then hook your other arm across it to hold it in place and just create a nice little stretch into your shoulder. Um, yeah, so if you if you haven't heard me talk about this before, this is the reason I'm wearing shoes nowadays when I'm rowing, in fact, is I'm, doing, I'm training for something called high rocks, which is basically eight one kilometer runs. In between each of them uh, are functional exercises like rowing, ski erg, um, sled push, sled pull, farmer carries, which I talked about, lunges, wall balls, and burpee broad jumps. Yeah, change arms. Um, and it's great. It's kind of these, it's well, the fitness racing sport, I think is what they call it. And it's one of the, it's like the new kind of fad sport, to be honest. I think loads of people are jumping on it because it's, it's great. I mean, Craig, if you look, I mean, it's what, a hundred pounds or something to enter, which is quite a lot of money. But when you think um, the British Rowing Indoor Championships, which have just been canceled, were 40 pounds to enter for what, six, seven minutes worth of a row, whereas High Rocks is a hundred pounds and you're in there for like a good hour and a half <laughs> on the doing all of this stuff. So from a value for money point of view, much higher. And I do wonder, um, right, let's move on to biceps next. Uh, hands behind you, as though you're flying, rotate those thumbs outwards. And then that should give you a nice stretch into your bicep. Yeah, I do wonder whether actually the big bubble explosion of indoor rowing of like the past couple of years that obviously popped with COVID, I do wonder whether quite a few of those people who would have entered like a rowing competition have d discovered things at High Rocks in the meantime um, and are now entering something like that. Because like the London one has gone from what, 700 last year to 7,000 this year or something like that. It's like this growth has been exponential. It's been incredible. Uh, triceps next, hands up in the air. Whee, down your back. And then touch your spine and then hold, kind of push that tricep back a little bit more with your other arm. So yeah. So I mean, listen, I jumped on the bandwagon, but um, part of that was just to experience it. But also I discovered that by training for high rocks, I'm pushing myself to places that um, basically since cutting my hand, remember I told you the story, that story yesterday, that I've kind of not really taken myself to anymore for whatever reason. So I'm kind of hoping that the high rocks thing, um, by training for that and competing in that and taking myself into that kind of, that line you have to cross, that kind of pain line you have to cross to be able to perform, will then feed back into the rowing again and I'll get back into form, let's change your arm, sorry, um, back into form for rowing, probably by the time I hit the next age bracket, hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, so plus it's, it's just, you know what, it's exciting. Sometimes just to change something different is really exciting. And because there's a whole bunch of different things, because it's the ski erg, the row, the farmer's carry and whatever, from a functional movement and from health and all that stuff, I think it's probably quite healthy to, quite good to have moved and to do something else, something a bit more varied um, than just sitting on a rowing machine like I have. So, um, especially with the various niggles I have with this strange muscle up here and whatever. So there you go, right, I'm done with the stretching. Sorry, I'm ranting about other things. So there you go. It was nice to properly row along in uh, 2022 for this 30 minute series. I'll hopefully pop up again and do a couple more before the end uh, of this 30 days of 30 minute row run. Um, but it does, uh, like I said, because I've recorded them once already, 
uh, it makes sense to just post them again with just like the new tops and tail things. So let me know um, whether, uh, let me know if you enjoyed this one. Like I say, this one, because it's two minutes on, two minutes between the two stroke rates, it just goes woof and flies by. So hopefully it did for you too. So let me know if it did. Uh, of course, let me know whether you went for the music version or the non-music version. Let me know whether you think it's round about time I shaved this. Well, it is. I think it's Tuesday today. I think Saturday or Sunday will be the cutting point before I and then I start a new contract with someone so I might as well turn up and be a bit more smarter. Could shave it off and look like Wolverine in the meantime though. I didn't do Wolverine for Halloween this year so I could do it now. Try and audition for... But now that Jackman's back for Deadpool 3, I don't think I'm going to get that role. So. Plus I can't act. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for putting up with me. Until the next video, take care, be well. Bye-bye.